You have about 18 minutes. I stand up after 18 minutes, so you have two minutes for questions. Well, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Vidushi, and uh, uh, I'm from IBM's Almaden Research Center based in uh, California, Bay Area. And uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, how we are using chemical foundation models uh, for complex materials. So uh, to begin with, I'll uh, give you a first overview. Uh, IBM's Almaden Research Center is one of the 12 research labs across the globe, and it has a legacy in driving materials innovations, specifically in semiconductors. And uh, lately, uh, IBM as an organization has started focusing on certain sustainable technologies, and energy storage has been recognized as one of them because of its global uh, importance. So our team at IBM uh, develops AI workflows to uh, discover new battery materials. And in this process, we collect data, create and fine tune AI models and do experimental validation as well. So we have been, uh, for the past two years, we have been doing uh, discovery for new battery electrolytes for upcoming battery chemistries. And our overall workflow as defined here uh, focuses on, uh, is a three-phased uh, workflow. Now, battery electrolytes, for those of you who are not familiar with the domain, are complex mixtures of uh, uh, inorganic salts and uh, organic liquids. So these are uh, pretty, uh, they lead dynamic interactions and they work in, uh, they form complex interfaces with the rest of the battery. So in this discovery workflow, we first focus on identifying uh, suitable candidate materials, solvents, salts, for the battery chemistries that we target, based upon domain-specific properties, redox potential, solubility, thermal properties, so forth. Next, once we have identified chemical space, we then come to a more rate-limiting step, which is what would be the formulation design. Now with chemical structures, and their composition itself, these create a really high multivariate design space. Very difficult to optimize experimentally, even with high throughput experimentations. Um, so we have been developing AI models to uh, spearhead this process. And uh, as a last step, last leg of this workflow, electrolytes don't work uh, in a standalone fashion. And sometimes we have to optimize them with respect to other system variables like uh, cathode or anode compositions. And that comes as a third step in this workflow before we hand over our uh, research prototype to our manufacturing partners for further uh, uh, development and research. Now, uh, some two years back, we developed this graph formulation model based on graph convolution networks uh, to uh, represent material, uh, formulation constituents. They're based upon their composition to the overall formulation performance or a property. We train these data sets with, uh, we train these model formulation models with battery data sets, electrolyte formulations versus formulation performance like ionic conductivity, uh, Columbic efficiency of the battery, specific capacity, and so forth. Now, since these are trained with battery experimental data sets, uh, we do face issues of data scarcity. These are not very transferable or gener generalizable. And so we used pre-trained graph convolution networks here uh, to represent these uh, molecules, to vectorize these molecules. So uh, you can find more details about this model in the publication uh, mentioned below. But I will show you a couple of uh, use cases where we have used this model to drive electrolyte discovery. We have been doing, uh, developing new electrolytes for several battery technologies, and I'll show you uh, uh, two e examples here. So in this first example, we discovered, uh, we came up with this electrolyte design for enhanced cycle life for lithium iodine conversion battery. So uh, this lithium metal-based battery uh, faced with uh, severe, uh, it, it, to, to begin with, this particular battery ha showed really good fast charging capability. So this was a promising aspect even for our client, but uh, it showed uh, significant degradation after, uh, capacity degradation after several cycles. So we used our AI model trained with a few data set from coin cells that we gathered during development of this battery to screen through uh, 
formulation designs uh, with 4,000 plus solvents that are present in EPA's list of industrial solvents. So uh, within the process of 14 days, we were able to shortlist certain formulation designs and validate them experimentally. So this brought about a 5,000 person speed up or acceleration as compared to the manual evaluation of, uh, uh, of the whole data set, uh, whole, whole source data set, and coming up with a non-intuitive solvent system. Uh, further, uh, furthering this uh, workflow, we expanded uh, the electrolyte discovery work to include other system variables like uh, cathode loading. Now, we desire higher cathode loading or higher percentage of active cathode materials in battery to enhance energy density. But uh, most of the times it is seen that for most of the batteries, that as we increase the cathode loading, the performance depreciates for the battery. And this happens due to increased internal resistance, shuttling effects, in this case, a dissolution of active material, parasitic side reactions. So it's been really challenging for the community to target higher cathode loadings for these type of conversion batteries. And we used our model by constraining the chemical design space, and we just focused here on optimizing the formulation space of uh, eight constituents, four salts and four solvents that we thought uh, we shortlisted from our screening for this particular battery. And we were able to improve the specific capacity of the battery by about 20% uh, for target cathode loadings of 40 to 50%. Well, uh, so this is an ongoing effort, and we are further exploring how can we expand upon uh, chemical design space here. So uh, with this, uh, here we used conventional deep learning models to drive electrolyte discovery. But uh, in this process, we have uh, faced several challenges. A lot of them we discussed during our discussion yesterday about data scarcity, uh, the uncertainty in the experimental data sets, biased literature data, uh, and since we also use simulation, pre-trained simula uh, models from simulation data set, we see limited transferability of these labels and a lot of cost associated with uh, uh, development of, for downstream tasks. So this motivated us to move to foundation models, uh, which was an ongoing effort within IBM Research and uh, this paper came out in 2022, uh, which showed the development of a foundation model called Mulformer. So what is a chemical foundation model? Our conventional foundation models that are trained on a natural language, based on natural language processing, conventional text, these chemical foundation models are trained on chemical language. For instance, uh, the string representation of a molecule here uh, smiles. So these uh, smile strings can early, uh, clearly define how atoms are connected within a molecule. So these smile strings can be used to train these transformer-based foundation models. Uh, so here, Molformer, which is uh, our foundation model, was trained uh, on over billion smile strings from uh, data sets acquired from Zinc and PubChem. And in a self-supervised manner, this model learned how uh, atoms are connected within the molecules uh, in a masked fashion. That means 15% of the tokens in the SMILES data set were masked, and the model tried to self-predict uh, what should be those uh, tokens there. So um, with this uh, foundation model, which is quite general purpose, uh, the hypothesis is that it has learned the underlying structural chemistry can then be further fine-tuned for downstream prediction task or several tasks. And as a domain, battery domain uh, researcher, uh, we focus on taking these general purpose models and fine-tuning them for, with battery data sets. Data sets on battery, mo uh, battery molecular properties or even formulation properties that I'm going to be talk about, uh, talking about in a moment. And uh, we fine-tune them for downstream tasks like prediction, generation, optimization, and the outputs from these uh, downstream tasks are subjected to human AI decision-making before we send it out for validation and a further uh, discovery loop. So, and currently, we have been uh, so pretty uh, successful at showcasing their powers at prediction and optimization tasks. 
while generative effort is something that is still under research. So coming back to their uh, fine tuning, uh, it's been established that these foundation models uh, can be used to embed molecular uh, smiles uh, st to their structural representations and can predict molecular properties fairly accurately. Uh, they have been tested against uh, uh, other deep learning models on benchmarking data sets in the literature. So with that has been fairly uh, established. As an ongoing effort in the community, uh, uh, which is uh, one of that effort led by Professor Venkat Vishwanathan from Michigan State University, is scaling this foundation model. So currently, Molformer is trained on 1 billion smile strings molecules. So the effort here is to, to train these models with tens and billions of molecules to improve their knowledge and their accuracies. On the other side, uh, another effort that is being pursued within IBM research is about multimodality. Now, uh, the smile strings can just denote how atoms are connected uh, within a structure. And a lot of this data set is synthetic that is used to train these models. So uh, the material community within IBM came together to uh, discuss how can we improve the chemical knowledge of these models. And one of the suggestions was to train foundation models for different modalities, uh, like charge densities, their graphs, their natural uh, language text, energy levels. So by training foundation models, transform models on these different modalities and then fusing their latent space, we would get a foundation model which has, which has uh, much more information about the chemistry of the materials and can be used for uh, multiple downstream tasks, spatially associated with generation, generative AI. So uh, it's a continuous effort and you would find a lot of uh, we are continuously reporting in the open resource, uh, open resources, the uh, ongoing progress on this front. Also, because uh, a lot of this data is, uh, it's challenging to extract all this data. Um, IBM is encouraging the whole community to contribute to this open source collaborative effort of developing these foundation models. And uh, with this, uh, a hope we are also active participants in an AI alliance that has been launched uh, by IBM with leading, uh, leading industrial and academic research communities across the globe. Now coming back, circling back to our problem of complex materials, uh, molecules and crystals are not present as it is in any applications, and they most definitely interface with other materials, leading to dynamic interactions, complex interfaces, uh, unique properties which are challenging to model, and uh, we have identified them here in a hierarchy of their complexity. So to begin with, uh, we started looking at how can we customize these foundation models for representing complex materials, starting with mixtures, and for that we took electrolyte formulations as a use case. So. Uh, electrolyte formulations can constitute of about uh, 2 to 8 to 10 constituents. So the smile strings of these constituents are uh, concatenated together, separated by a SEP token. And this string is then tokenized and then converted to a vector embedding by the transformer model. And this embedding is then further aggregated with the composition embedding. Now this aggregation of... Uh, uh, structural embedding with the composition embedding is something that uh, we have explored uh, uh, around the several grounds, and I will give a comment on that in a moment. And what we realized that we map this aggregated layer to the formulation property, and this model uh, showed a significant improvement in predicting the performance of the formulation. Uh, as you can see, in, uh, in comparison to conventional machine learning models adopted in literature, also formulation graphs, uh, definitely shows that uh, this approach, uh, use of foundation model, does bring some uh, insightful information to these models and can, can help us uh, represent these complex uh, materials. But coming back to the aggregation, so we did a further active research in uh, assessing different modalities, 
uh, different learning architectures. And uh, what we realized is one of our latest model uh, based upon a transfer, uh, encoder decoder transformer model, uh, we call it selfies BART model, uh, further gave us a, a improvement in the performance of the model. And uh, we thought that this might be because of the aggregator, how we are aggregating embeddings with the compositions. And we did a several tests there. What we realized it uh, over here, how we aggregate, we concatenate them, we uh, scale based on compositions and add them. We can apply attention over them. Still, despite that, uh, it was because of the latent space of this model. So uh, the latent, we uh, investigated the latent space of this uh, mole former and compared uh, uh, this encoder decoder model and compared it with the mole former. And what we realized is that uh, latent, latent space created by the encoder decoder model uh, revealed much more composability of structural motives. And uh, this showed us that this model has uh, can be further used for generative tasks. So uh, with that, that, we did a bit of investigation on the latent space. And so in the interest of time, I will uh, stop my presentation here, drawing a few conclusions. This is an active uh, research area. We are continuously working on uh, further assessing different uh, modes of representing complex materials with these foundation models. Uh, they have shown promise in our initial uh, um, uh, work with the electrolyte formulations. Uh, they definitely reduce the downstream, uh, the cost of developing models for uh, downstream tasks. And also, most importantly, uh, because uh, they are pre-trained on unlabeled data set, we do not, uh, we skip the cost, computational cost of simulation data sets. But then there are certain open questions that uh, still needs to be addressed. How important is scalability for accuracies in uh, a lot of these uh, uh, downstream uh, tasks? And also, uh, how can the effect of, uh, how can this uh, pre-training with large synthetic data, uh, the, uh, how can that effect percolate to uh, downstream prediction tasks there? So with that, uh, I'll be happy to discuss uh, more with you all. But before that, I want to acknowledge uh, our team. Uh, on the uh, top left, this is the Almaden Research Center located in Bay Area, the top of a hill, beautiful location. Uh, on the right, we have our energy storage team uh, who's been uh, developing new battery chemistries. And uh, uh, below are our uh, collaborators from IBM research labs across the globe who have continuously uh, put together uh, effort to uh, customize these foundation models with us for battery domain. So with that, I would like to thank you all for your attention. And uh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I see eager questions already. Before I... yeah. So beautiful work. Uh, I have two questions. So first question is that when you mentioned the optimization of the electrolyte. Uh, 